morning, welcome. Today we're going to go over to Plymouth Plantation and take a look around. It's a good place to start when you're thinking about touring New England because this is where it all began. We start by going into the Henry Hornblower II Visitor Center. Wasn't there a captain named Hornblower? Horatio Hornblower. Yeah. So once you really get out of the movie, then uh, there's this little museum that has some artifacts and uh, uh, recreations of what they would have had to deal with on their way across the sea and when they arrived. So what we have here is a binnacle. Now this would not have been on the Mayflower. This is something that they've equipped the current Mayflower with in accordance with uh, 1957 requirements for navigation. But this would not have been on the original. This is what they would have had on the original. It is just a, a compass in a box. And these are some of the other navigation tools that they would have used. Uh, a traverse board and a cross rod for uh, navigating across the Atlantic. So this is called a chip log. And with the, the chip log, you would tie knots in the rope and then you would hang the rope over the side of the ship and as the knots would pay, uh, pay out, uh, it would determine how many knots would go out and that's how you would determine the speed of the ship. And hence, where you, the concept of the ship travels at five knots or six uh, knots or whatever. Okay. Contrary to popular belief, where uh, people think that they dressed like uh, the Quaker Oats guy, they were actually in Elizabethan type of clothes. This here would be a sea suit. Typical deckhand would wear something like this. So Captain Christopher Jones was the yep. captain of the Mayflower. Taking the trail up to the village. Now, can you imagine? Cooking a pizza in that? <laughs> huh? Or maybe your turkey. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Cook your turkey in that. Yes. So, Plymouth Plantation Museum is like a living museum where people are actually uh, doing the various chores and they're in costume. And you can walk down from the central house down through the center of the uh, uh, village here with all the recreations of the cabins. You can go into the cabins and look at the how they lived and uh, each one has a different name of the different family that was on it. So let's take a look at some of those things. I'm going to start with one that's being built right now. Uh, the people who were with it didn't realize how thick the thatching was on the roof. Look at that. It's pretty thick. Oh, look what we got here. Hi there. Give me some food. <laughs> Feed me, Seymour. Fuller, that was a very common family in America. Let's see how they started out here. So the house down at the very end of the avenue here is called the Soul House. That's the Soul family. It's actually the Children's Discovery Center. Let's go inside and see what they've got for the kids to look at. Welcome to the Children's Discovery House. Things for them to try out. I feel like to sleep on a bed like that every night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've been a hot height of luxury for them. Yeah. Here's where all the cooking would be done, right in the corner of the house. And all the smoke and soot would go right up the side the chimney that was open right into the central living quarters. And I'm sure this was the woman's best friend, the broom to keep all the little dirts and critters and chickens out of the house. There's the shutter would actually hinge down to cover the windows because there was no glass. Everything was just open air. And of course they had to grow everything. If they didn't kill it, they'd eat it. Quite a great number of children here in the time 
and like to be more and more and more in such for us. Mm -hmm. Fair number of young families here in such in the town. Say that again. Yeah, I don't know if Hollywood's going to discover you. What were they doing in there? They'll make a profit. But we are just paying with our labor to own land. Even if you come back in three years. We're cooking something here. Pottage. Pottage. I'm sorry, what? Pottage. Of turkey. So, um, boiled up a turkey yesterday, but they're so large here. You've always got a little bit left. Uh, so, the broth of such we saved and some of the meat as well, some of the bones and then boiled it up with some oats that we have and then as well as some seasonings. And that fire puts out a lot of heat for the, the little room. You can mm -hmm. see how that would warm the place. Oh yay. Uh, first winter I was here, my sister and I got stuck into our house without anybody else. In the middle of a snowstorm. We decided that it would be best to build up the fire as large as we could without actually starting a fire in the house. Mm -hmm. um, and that we might still be cold even if we did so. But we built up a fire a little bit larger than this and had to stay at the other end of the house the whole time. <laughs> um, for we thought that we would burn ourselves. Eventually opened up a window in the middle of a snowstorm if you can imagine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're here just to court the young ladies? Oh, thankfully not. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I actually live with Mary's family right now. Uh, about four, five months ago now, I moved out to live with her family to gain some independence from mine. But also, uh, the Warrens, the chiefest thing they're great at is making doubters. And so their father, he has not much help to his fields. He has two boarders living with him, some young men. But, I mean, his, his family's so large, his field plot is so large that he does need some more help to it. So, I gain some autonomy from my parents and my brother, and I get to help Master Warren for a bit. And our families get along rather well. Master Warren came on the Mayflower with my parents and myself and my brother, so we've gotten to know him well enough. Uh, but on days like this, where my parents are down with the brook and my brother's out with the fishing vessel on the sea right now, There are stones around here, I don't mean to say that, but they're just rubble stones, they're not. No, better now though, there's some, some settlements up the coast here, and, uh, and of course, I mean Virginia and places like that too, but I mean, that's pretty far too, you'd probably walk into there if you had to. And this fellow has a proper fireplace, not just a corner of the room. Yeah, a nice, respectable wood pile next to it. He actually has a wood floor instead of a dirt say, floor. Guy, yeah. That was that was luxury. Yeah. Right. Once again, they have a broom in here, which is really I'm convenient really for keeping the chickens out. Yeah. The bed is pretty much just a burlap sack put on a frame here. I'm not sure what they've got inside the sack. It doesn't, yeah, doesn't really feel like straw. A little more. Yeah, it might be might be down. Yeah. And it's a road bed. And Another well, building under construction, or refurb, maybe. It is quite the view, as you see there, sitting right on the water here. There's the cornfields. Getting good pictures? I hope so. Mm, it's iron. Yeah. I definitely not see that. <laughs> Alright, so describe to me what the smells are like around here. You have a much better palate for the, the scents and the smells. What are you smelling? The sea air, the um, smells of wood burning for the fires for each of the cabins to be able to cook or make things with food wise or um, heating wise.
And this here would be their defensive position. Also, it served as the worship center for the community. Uh, they would hold church here every Sunday, all six hours of it. So this would have been the meeting house, or more appropriately a fort if they were under attack. Artillery on the second floor for our defensive positions. So a little warm today? Yes, humid. It wasn't when we first started. It wasn't. The humidity's been building yes, up. Yes, and the yeah. sun came out and so. It's nice. Nice to have the sun. Nice to have the sun. Could have been could raining. Have, could do without the sticky. And it's not as warm as Florida. No, it's not. Thankfully. Now it's really interesting looking at the, how they built these things too. If you look at the the post and beam and pegs and stuff that they used to put it together. You know? It took a lot of skilled craftsmen to do stuff like this. You had to really know what you were doing. So what you have here is a door with door nails in it. And the door nails would be pounded in and then on the back side they'd be bent over so that you could never use them again. Hence became the saying, dead as a doornail. Of course, what would a trip to a sightseeing location be without having a gift store to get to? So here we are. Uh, they've got a lovely gift store here with some things that you can get. And there's also some a food court uh, over here. We're going to go try out later. Can't leave New England without getting some real maple syrup. Or maybe an authentic pilgrim hat? Now that would look nice on my desk. I wonder how much that is. Got a quill and inkwell for $8.99. And a little Mayflower Christmas tree ornament. Again, $8.99. For your nostalgic buffs, here is a, a mug featuring Henry VIII and his disappearing wives. Hey, those are those really look like really nice Christmas ornaments. How much are those? Too expensive to pick up and look at? Oh, thank you. $36. $36. We could do that. We could, but we won't. It's a more authentic looking quill cool set. How much is that one? There you go. This one? Either one of these. $65.99. We couldn't do that. So, oh, a little bright out here, but uh, yeah, uh, Plymouth Plantation Living Museum. Uh, wonderful interactions with the people that are here. Uh, giving you interpretations of how they lived back then. Fun place to come and have uh, strike up interesting conversations.